So let's, let's look at an example in 1D. So we start with a bunch of points, one-dimensional points. We don't have any labels for them. So the only thing we know is that they came from two Gaussians, and we want to discover what these two Gaussians are automagically. Um, so uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to start by placing two Gaussians in a random um, sort of in, in, in random positions on the line, and these are one-dimensional Gaussians, so their mean is just a number, so here's the mean for the yellow, here's the mean for the blue, uh, and they have the same variance in this case. <clears throat> so the first step of the algorithm, we're going to figure out how likely is each of the points to come from the yellow or from the blue. So basically, for each one of these points, we're asking a question, does it look more like the yellow gau like a sample from the yellow Gaussian or a sample from the blue Gaussian? And the way we compute that is uh, using Bayesian. So that's a generative probability. You take xi, subtract the mean of the blue Gaussian, square it, divide by the variance, exponentiate, uh, normalize. That gives you the probability that uh, that point xi came from the blue Gaussian. Right. So uh, let's pick a point, that point right there, right. The, 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 the rightmost point. Uh, will it have a high probability p of xi given b? No. It's going to be very, very small because that point is very far from the blue mean and the blue variance is kind of, uh, is kind of um, spiky. It's not very spread out. Right. Will it have a high number for the yellow? It'll be even smaller. Right. And that's where interesting things start to happen. Um, so this will have a small number for blue, but the number for yellow is going to be much, much smaller, orders of magnitude smaller. So then when you compute the Bayesian posterior, you take both of those probabilities from the blue and from the yellow, you combine them with the priors, by the way, I assume priors are equal for now, uh, <clears throat> stick them in the base rule, bi for that point is going to come out to be almost 1. That point doesn't look like a sample from the blue, it doesn't look like a sample from the yellow, but it's much more, I guess, it's much more unlike the yellow than it is unlike the blue. So the posterior is actually going to be really high for that point. It's going to be assigned to the, uh, to the blue. Um, uh, so... Um, and that's just bi for one point, and of course you would repeat it for all of them, right? So, for example, this point, uh, would you expect bi to be high or low? It's the probability that that point came from the blue. Well, no, actually, it should be, it should be pretty low, right? So this is very, very close to the yellow mean, and it's a lot, hard, it's a lot further away from the blue mean. Right. So that, po that point is going to be mostly yellow with a little bit of a probability for the blue. This one is going to be mostly blue with maybe a tiny bit of the yellow, and all of these are going to be blue pretty much throughout. So um, you compute the bi's, you compute the ai's, which are just one minus bi, so that's the probability that they came from the, uh, from the yellow. Um, and then these numbers, the bi's, they basically represent a coloring of the points. It, again, it's just like k-means, only in k-means, points would be either colored fully blue or fully yellow, and here we have sort of fractional colorings, right? This one is mostly yellow, this one is mostly blue, these ones are pretty much entirely blue, but you have, you have a bit of a mixture, right? So the point belongs to both the yellow and uh, and the blue distributions. And once I've done the coloring, I can do re-estimation, right? I can now take these colors and say, well, these points, they came from the blue, so now I can estimate the blue mean and the blue variance, because now I've got the assignments, right? And the way you do that is really simple. You just add up the x's for the points and you divide by the sum. Now, um, and this sum is a little bit odd, uh, and the first time you see it, it's going to look a little bit confusing. So what you're doing is you're taking each x value, x1, x2, and so on, um, you're multiplying it by bi, which is the posterior, and you're adding them up. Now, if you're having a hard time understanding what you're doing here, pretend for a moment that you're doing k-means instead of em. If you are doing k-means, these bi's would be 0 or 1. The point either goes into the blue 
cluster or it goes into the yellow cluster. So bi is 1 if the point goes into blue cluster and it's 0 if it goes into the yellow. Right? So if that happens, suppose that that point bi was 0 and for everything else bi was 1. Right? So what does that look like now? b1 is 0, so x1 is not a part of this sum, and b1 is not a part of the bottom either. Now what's left? b2 would be 1, b3 would be 1, all of them would be 1. So what you're doing is you're taking all the points except the first point and adding up their x values and dividing by the number of the points that went to the blue cluster. That's just n minus 1 in this case. Right? So your estimation is the same as if somebody came in and told you these are the points from the blue cluster. Right? Does, does, does this make sense? This is actually the critical thing. If you get this, you'll get the rest of it. This is good. Is everyone good on this? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so that's how you re-estimate the blue mean. Um, the difference now is bi's are not just 0 and 1, they're probabilities, they're numbers between 0 and 1. So what it means is when you're, computing the, when you're computing the blue mean, these points, xn, xn minus 1, they are, they get the full weight, they give their full weight to the blue mean, and the point x1 gives a tiny fraction of its weight to the blue mean, and it's going to give a bigger fraction of its weight to the yellow mean. So that, that's the soft assignments for you. It basically, uh, in k-means, a point contributes either to one centroid or to another. In em, a point gives a little bit of its mass to every centroid, but it gives more mass to the centroids that it's more associated with. So that's what, the, what, that's what those bi's uh, represent. And of course you compute, the, uh, you compute the variance in the same way. You take the deviations from this mean that you've computed, and again this is not mu1, I'm sorry about the bug on the slide, this should be the mu of b and this should be the mu of b as well. Um, so you take the difference between each x and the mean uh, for the blue mean, right, uh, and you multiply those squared differences by the weights, by the confidences that that point is from the blue distribution or from the yellow distribution. So this is for the blue, and then you do the same thing for the, uh, for, the, for the yellow, right? So you multiply the numbers by the AIs, which are the weights, the probability that the point goes is associated with uh, a yellow uh, distribution. And you do the same thing for the mean and for the variance. And uh, I guess re just remember that AIs are just 1 minus BI. So uh, in this formula for AI, which term is going to dominate at the first iteration? Yeah, so there's, there's only really one point that's going to dominate. All of these AIs are going to be very, very small because most points are colored blue. The only one that's colored uh, mostly yellow is that one. So there's going to be lots of weight on this point. Sorry about the pointer. Uh, and there's going to be a little bit of weight on the second point, and there's going to be zero weight on everything else. Okay. <clears throat> so when you do that, uh, that is going to be the likely result. So your yellow Gaussian is going to pretty much stay where it was. It's going to move a little bit because it's all concentrated on one point, on, on that one point with a little bit of contribution from that point. Uh, but your blue Gaussian is going to move massively to the right because now all of these yellow, blue points are pulling on it. So they, they participate in the recomputation of the mean and the variance. So yeah, it's, it's going to pull the Gaussian, they're going to pull the Gaussian towards them. Uh, and that's one iteration of EM. And of course you don't stop here, you keep going. So at the next iteration, you're going to redo the coloring, and now the coloring is going to be a little bit different. So uh, those points are going to pull a lot more on the blue Gaussian, so it's probably going to migrate to these points, and the yellow is going to start encroaching on its turf, and eventually after a few iterations it'll, it might look something like that. Right? So this is a made-up example, uh, but this is, the, uh, this is what it might end up uh, looking like. <clears throat> uh, so that's essentially how you estimate the means and the variances starting from nothing, just a set of uh, data points. I only estimated the parameters of the Gaussians, I didn't estimate the priors, I kept, I kept the priors uniform. Um, but you can also estimate uh, the priors. So uh, the way you would do that is um, the prior for the blue, you just add up all of the bi's and divide them by the number of uh, 
by the number of data points that you have. And that is the estimate for how... how uh, basically, what this is telling you is it's telling you what proportion of the points is the blue distribution describing now. What, 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 what proportion of the data is it describing? Uh, if you do that, you actually have to be careful because a lot of the time, in a case like that, after the first iteration, blue would grab everything. Right, and then and then yellow might might get zeroed out. So that 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 happens uh, commonly. So sometimes you just peg the priors um, at equal uh, at, at at a uniform distribution. So you force them to be 0.5, and you don't reestimate them. 